So, you got a Tesla. You never have to pay for gas or oil again. But, you still have to charge. So charging at superchargers can be quite expensive, especially when you're out and about, you can't really find a charger. But at home, you can actually get quite affordable charging with just a solar generator and a few solar panels. So I'm gonna show you three ways you can use the EcoFlow Delta Pro to get a charge into your Tesla. I'm also gonna show you all the equipment you'll need and also how much each of those pieces cost. Plus I'll share some important tips at the end of the video on how you can optimize your setup so that you can get the most charging into your Tesla. To start off, we have the EcoFlow Delta Pro, a solar generator capable of 120 volt charging by itself off of these standard outlets. It can take up to 1600 watts of solar input and output 3600 watts by itself in a single phase. Although I will only be showing the standard plug at 15 amps. The math for wattage is basically volts times amps. So theoretically, we could get up to 1800 watts. I have this group of solar panels connected to the Delta Pro and it is getting about 1000 watts in the afternoon today. So on a sunny day, it can do a full 1600 watts, but on a gloomy day like this, it gets half or sometimes less than half, but the battery is quite full right now. Now here's the standard Tesla charger. And if I plug this right into the Delta Pro and then into the Tesla, it'll actually not work. And that's because the Tesla charger actually searches for a ground in the system that Delta Pro will not be able to complete. So you need one of these. This is a dummy ground which you can plug in to your Delta Pro circuit and it will tell the Tesla charger that you have a ground. This thing is inexpensive, it'll cost you about four to nine dollars. Now word of caution, when you have a floating ground, do not connect your Delta Pro to any plugs in your home as grounds do not mix and may cause surges or inconsistencies in your electricity. Now with that, your Tesla should start charging and you can hear it, the Delta Pro ramping up so that it can start charging and uh, it will draw around 1400 watts to charge your Tesla. My Model X gets about four miles an hour. This can go on for a while with solar. It just takes a lot of time. So let's go way faster. This is where the price shoots way up, but you get way more usable charging speeds. So with the second Delta Pro, you can get 240 split phase, meaning you can double your voltage going into your Tesla by sharing the 120 volt loads on both Delta Pros and combining it with this hub. I got this Amazon found level two charger that has this 16 amp plug. Since we are upping the voltage 240, we now take 240, multiply it with the 16 to get a theoretical 3,840 watts, which is more than double the speed of the 1400 we got from the standard plug. Now I wanted to point out that this way of charging didn't need a ground at the point of the double voltage hub. Now I'm not sure if that is necessarily a good or bad thing. It does work and it's not connected to any electronics in the home so it should be safe. But I would consult an electrician to make sure. And you know it is made from like a third party so I'm not sure if it is the most safe and effective way to charge but you're gonna get the most standard level two charging which is up to 16 amps at 240 volts so as you can see we are charging the model x at 11 miles an hour and pulling about 1800 watts from both delta pros So this part is a little bit embarrassing, but I am showing the 30 amp adapter for the Tesla charger that normally will plug into a 30 amp plug. What I didn't realize is that the fitting for the 30 amp plug on the double voltage hub is different from this. So you do need an adapter to plug into that plug. At the end, I'll be plugging this into a Delta Pro Ultra so that you can see because I no longer have the Delta Pros. Now if you remember the Tesla needs to sense a ground for safety, we cannot use the dummy ground from before since the front panels are now off when the double voltage hub is in use. We will need to add the dummy ground into one of the other two plugs on the double voltage hub. 
EcoFlow sells this solution, which is a Dominic plug adapter, $50, and you will also need a plug that connects to their adapter and to one of the heads on the double voltage hub. The adapter plugs into this Ethernet port on one of the Delta Pros and this power cord will go into one of the open plugs on the double voltage hub. And bam, now it should work. Here's an example of my Delta Pro Ultra with the adapter in place. The Tesla will be able to draw about 5,500 watts, maxing out at about 24 amps. Now for the Delta Pros, you don't want both inverters working so close to maximum output all the time. So you can adjust the amperage on the Tesla app to lower the load a little. This way of charging is definitely both flexible and fast. Some tips for maximizing your setup. So if you're going to do this with solar, it's always better to charge when the solar is charging so that it can go directly into the Tesla from the inverter instead of into the battery and then into the Tesla, as there is some line loss each time power is traveling. The most flexible of the three ways to charge is obviously the last one, as you can always adjust the speed of the charging by adjusting the speed amperage on the Tesla app, so you can maybe try to match that up with the solar charging with the Tesla charging speed. When one of the Delta Pro loses power, the double voltage hub will automatically shut down and will require a manual start in order to get it going again. I will usually set it up so the Delta Pros stop output at 10% for that reason. Another reason to set a stop is that the solar MPPT does need a ramp up period if it is charging from zero. Meaning, if you had 1600 watts of solar going in and the battery was dead, the Delta Pro would immediately turn on again from the solar, but it may start only charging at a few hundred watts before the MPPT ramps up with battery power. Lastly, I included this chart to show the charging speeds, items you need, and the expected mileage you can get with these setups. I didn't include solar panels as there is a huge variance on those, and it was really hard estimating that cost. Honestly, it's a pretty penny to get into this, but it can be a good foray to get into solar. Last thing I wanted to point out is your miles on the fastest and the mid options are capped because the amount of solar coming in throughout the day. If you want to check out any of the items or products in this video, I link them down below, their affiliate links so they'll help out this channel. Make sure to like and subscribe if you like this kind of content, I was, will be making much more of this type of stuff. Thanks for watching. Peace.